When did the concept of square root originate? A square root of a number is a number that, when multiplied by itself, equals the given number. For instance, the square root of 25 is 5, 5x5 5 5 equals 25. The concept of the square root has been in existence for many thousands of years. Exactly how it was discovered is not known. But several different methods of exacting square roots were used by early mathematicians. Babylonian clay tablets from 1900 to 1600 BCE contain the squares and cubes of integers. 1 through 30. The early Egyptians used square roots around 1700 BCE, and during the Greek classical period. 600 to 300 BCE, better arithmetic methods improved square root operations. In the 16th century, French mathematician René Descartes 1596 to 1650, was the first to use the square root symbol, called the radical sign, backslash slash dash dash. What are Venn diagrams? Venn diagrams are graphical representations of set theory, which use circles to show the logical relationships of the elements of different sets, using the logical operators. Also called in computer parlance Boolean operators, and, or, and not. John Ventoux, 1834 to 1923, first used them in his 1881 Symbolic Logic, in which he interpreted and corrected the work of George Boole, 1815 to 1864, and Augustus de Morgan, 1806-1871. While his attempts to clarify perceived inconsistencies and ambiguities in Boole's work are not widely accepted, the new method of diagramming is considered to be an improvement. Venn used shading to better illustrate inclusion and exclusion. Charles Dodgson, 1832 to 1898, better known by his pseudonym Lewis Carroll. Refined Venn system, in particular by enclosing the diagram to represent the universal set. What was the first National Physics Society organized in the United States? The first National Physics Society in the United States was the American Physical Society. Organized on May 20, 1899, at Columbia University in New York City. The first president was physicist Henry Augustus Rowland, 1848-1901. Who invented the computer? Computers developed from calculating machines. One of the earliest mechanical devices 3 for calculating, still widely used today, is the abacus a frame carrying parallel rods on which beads or counters are strung. The abacus originated in Egypt in 2000 BCE it reached the Orient about a thousand years later. 
and arrived in Europe in about the year 300 CE, in 1617. John Napier invented Napier's bones marked pieces of ivory for multiples of numbers. In the middle of the same century, Blaise Pascal produced a simple mechanism for adding and subtracting. Multiplication by repeated addition was a feature of a stamped drum or wheel machine of 1694 invented by Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. In 1823, the English visionary Charles Babbage, 1792-1871, persuaded the British government to finance an analytical engine. This would have been a machine that could undertake any kind of calculation. It would have been driven by steam. But the most important innovation was that the entire program of operations was stored on a punched tape. Babbage's machine was not completed in his lifetime because the technology available to him was not sufficient to support his design. However, in 1991 a team led by Doran Swade, 1946, at London Science Museum built the analytical engine. Sometimes called the difference engine, based on Babbage's work. Measuring 10 feet, 3 meters, wide by 6.5 feet, 2 meters, tall. It weighed 3 tons and could calculate equations down to 31 digits. The feat proved that Babbage was way ahead of his time, even though the device was impractical. Because one had to turn a crank hundreds of times in order to generate a single calculation. Modern computers use electrons, which travel at nearly the speed of light. Based on the concepts of British mathematician Alan M. Turing, 1912-1954, the earliest programmable electronic computer was the 1500 Valve Colossus. Formulated by Max Newman, 1897-1985, built by T.H. Flowers, 1905-1998. And used by the British government in 1943 to crack the German codes generated by the cipher machine Enigma. What is a trademark? A trademark protects a word, phrase, name, symbol, sound, or color that identifies and distinguishes the source of the goods or services of one party, individual or company, from those of another party. What is the purpose of a trade secret? A trade secret is information a company chooses to protect from its competitors. Perhaps the most famous trade secret is the formula for Coca-Cola. When does 0x0 equals 1? Factorials are the product of a given number and all the factors less than that number. The notation n is used to express this idea. For example, 5. 5 factorial is 5x4x3x2x1 equals 120. For completeness, 
0 is assign the value 1, so 0x0 0 0 equals 1. What is Zeno's paradox? Zeno of Elia, c. 490 c. 425 BCE, a Greek philosopher and mathematician. Is famous for his paradoxes, which deal with the continuity of motion. One form of the paradox is, if an object moves with constant speed along a straight line. From point 0 to point 1, the object must first cover half the distance, one half. Then half the remaining distance, one fourth, then half the remaining distance, one eighth, and so on without end. The conclusion is that the object never reaches point one. Because there is always some distance to be covered, motion is impossible. In another approach to this paradox, Zeno used an allegory telling of a race between a tortoise and Achilles, who could run 100 times as fast. Where the tortoise started running 10 rods, 165 feet, in front of Achilles. Because the tortoise always advanced 1 slash 100 of the distance that Achilles advanced in the same time period. It was theoretically impossible for Achilles to pass him. The English mathematician and writer Charles Dodgson, better known as Lewis Carroll, used the characters of Achilles and the tortoise to illustrate his paradox of infinity. What does the expression tiling the plane mean? It is a mathematical expression describing the process of forming a mosaic pattern. A tessellation, by fitting together an infinite number of polygons so that they cover an entire plane. Tessellations are the familiar patterns that can be seen in designs for quilts. Floor coverings, and bathroom tile work. What was the first National Chemical Society organized in the United States? The first National Chemical Society in the United States was the American Chemical Society. Organized in New York City on April 20, 1876. The first president was John William Draper. 1811 to 1882. When was the first patent issued in the United States? The first U. S. Patent was granted on July 31, 1790 to Samuel Hopkins, 1743-1818. Of Philadelphia for making potash and pearl ash a cleaning formula called potash. It was a key ingredient for making glass, dyeing fabrics, baking. Making saltpeter for gunpowder and most importantly for making soap. What is the Pythagorean theorem?
in a right triangle, one where two of the sides meet in a 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. The Pythagorean theorem, also known as the rule of Pythagoras, states that the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, h2 equals a 2 plus b2. If the lengths of the sides are, h equals 5 inches, a equals 4 inches, and b equals 3 inches, then h equals backslash slash, a 2 plus b2, equals backslash slash, 42 plus 32, equals backslash slash, 16 plus 9, equals backslash slash 25 equals 5. The theorem is named for the Greek philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras. C580 C500 BCE Pythagoras is credited with the theory of the functional significance of numbers in the objective world and numerical theories of musical pitch. As he left no writings, the Pythagorean theorem may actually have been formulated by one of his disciples. What was the first computer game? Despite the fact that computers were not invented for playing games. The idea that they could be used for games did not take long to emerge. Alan Turing proposed a famous game called Imitation Game in 1950. In 1952, Rand Air Defense Lab in Santa Monica created the first military simulation games. In 1953, Arthur Samuel, 1901-1990, created a checkers program on the new IBM 701. From these beginnings computer games have today become a multi-billion dollar industry. What was the first mathematical society organized in the United States? The first mathematical society in the United States was the American Mathematical Society founded in 1888 to further the interests of mathematics research and scholarship. The first president was John Howard Van Amringe, 1835-1915. Are there any unsolved problems in mathematics? The earliest challenges and contests to solve important problems in Mathematics date back to the 16th and 17th centuries. Some of these problems have continued to challenge mathematicians until modern times. For example, Pierre de Fermat, 1601-1665, issued a set of mathematical challenges in 1657. Many on prime numbers and divisibility. The solution to what is now known as Fermat's last theorem was not established until the late 1990s by Andrew Wiles, 1953. David Hilbert, 1862-1943, a German mathematician identified 23 unsolved problems in 1900 with the hope that these problems would be solved in the 21st century. Although some of the problems were solved, others remain unsolved to this day. More recently, 
in 2000 the Clay Mathematics Institute named seven mathematical problems that had not been solved with the hope that they could be solved in the 21st century. A $1 million prize will be awarded for solving each of these seven problems. What is a patent? A patent grants the property rights of an invention to the inventor. Once a patent is issued, it excludes others from making, using, or selling the invention in the United States. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office issues three types of patents. Utility patents are granted to anyone who invents or discovers any new and useful process, machine, manufactured article, compositions of matter, or any new and useful improvement in any of the above. Design patents are granted to anyone who invents a new original, and ornamental design for an article of manufacture. Plant patents are granted to anyone who has invented or discovered and asexually reproduced any distinct and new variety of plant. Who is the only you? S. President to receive a patent. On May 22, 1849, 12 years before he became the 16th U. S. President, Abraham Lincoln, 1809 to 1865, was granted U.S. Patent Number 6. 469 for a device to help steamboats pass over shoals and sandbars. The device, never tested or manufactured, had a set of adjustable buoyancy chambers. Made from metal and waterproof cloth, attached to the ship's sides below the water line. Bellows could fill the chambers with air to float the vessel over the shoals and sandbars. It was the only patent ever held by a United States president. What was Maniac? Maniac, mathematical analyzer, numerator, integrator, and computer. Was built at the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory under the direction of Nicholas C. Metropolis, 1915-1999, between 1948 and 1952. It was one of several different copies of the High-speed computer built by John von Neumann, 1903-1957, for the Institute for Advanced Studies, IS. It was constructed primarily for use in the development of three atomic energy applications. Specifically the hydrogen bomb. It originated with the work on NIAC, Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. The first fully operational, large-scale, electronic digital computer. NIAC was built at the Moore School of Electrical Engineering at the University of Pennsylvania between 1943 and 1946. Its builders, John Priesper Eckert Jr. 1919 to 1995, and John William Mochley, 1907 to 1980. 
virtually launched the modern era of the computer with NIAC. What was the name of the personal computer introduced by Apple in the early 1980s? Lisa was the name of the personal computer that Apple introduced. The forerunner of the Macintosh personal computer, Lisa had a graphical user interface and a mouse. How is Pascal's triangle used? Pascal's triangle is an array of numbers. Arranged so that every number is equal to the sum of the two numbers above it on either side. It can be represented in several slightly different triangles, but this is the most common form. 1123615 The triangle is used to determine the numerical coefficients. Resulting from the computation of higher powers of a binomial, two numbers added together. When a two binomial is raised to a higher power, the result is expanded, using the numbers in that row of the triangle. For example, a plus b, 1 equals a 1 plus b1, using the coefficients in the second line of the triangle. A plus B, 2 equals a 2 plus 2 of plus B2, using the coefficients in the next line of the triangle. The first line of the triangle correlates to A and B0. While the calculation of coefficients is fairly straightforward. The triangle is useful in calculating them for the higher powers without needing to multiply them out. Binomial coefficients are useful in calculating probabilities. Blaise Pascal was one of the pioneers in developing laws of probability. As with many other mathematical developments, there is some evidence of a previous appearance. Of the triangle in China. Around 1100 CE, the Chinese mathematician Chia Xian wrote about. The tabulation system for unlocking binomial coefficients, the first publication of the triangle, was probably in a book called Piling Up Powers and Unlocking Coefficients by Lu Juhsi. What was the first major use for punched cards? Punched cards were a way of programming, or giving instructions to, a machine. In 1801, Joseph Marie Jacquard, 1752-1834, built a device that could do automated pattern weaving. Cards with holes were used to direct threads in the loom, creating predefined patterns in the cloth. The pattern was determined by the arrangement of holes in the cards. With wire hooks passing through the holes to grab and pull through specific threads to be woven into the cloth. By the 1880s, Hermann Hall Erich, 1860-1929, was using the idea of punched cards to give machines instructions. He built a punched card tabulator that processed the data gathered for the 1890 United States Census in six weeks, three times the speed of previous compilations. Metal pins in the machine's reader passed through holes punched in cards the size of dollar bills. 
momentarily closing electric circuits. The resulting pulses advanced counters assigned to details such as income and family size. A sorter could also be programmed to pigeonhole cards according to pattern of holes. An important aid in analyzing census statistics. Later, Hal Arith founded Tabulating Machines Co., which in 1924 became IBM. When IBM adopted the 80 column punched card, Measuring 7 and 3 8 x 3 and 1 4 inches 18.7 x 8.25 cm and 0.007 inches 0.17 mm thick. The de facto industry standard was set, which has endured for decades. What is the ancient Greek problem of squaring the circle? This problem was to construct, with a straight edge and compass. A square having the same area as a given circle. The Greeks were unable to solve the problem because the task is impossible. As was shown by the German mathematician Ferdinand von Lindemann, 1852-1939, in 1882. What was the first National Science Institute? On March 3, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed a congressional charter creating the National Academy of Sciences, which stipulated that the Academy shall, whenever called upon by any department of the government, investigate, examine, experiment, and report upon any subject of science or art. The actual expense of such investigations, examinations, experiments, and reports to be paid from appropriations which may be made for the purpose. But the Academy shall receive no compensation whatever for any services to the Government of the United States. The Academy's first president was Alexander Dallas Back, 1806 to 1867. Today, the Academy and its sister organizations the National Academy of Engineering. Established in 1964, and the Institute of Medicine, established in 1970 serve as the country's preeminent sources of advice on science and technology and their bearing on the nation's welfare. The National Research Council was established in 1916 by the National Academy of Sciences at the request of President Woodrow Wilson, 1856 to 1924, to bring into cooperation existing governmental, educational, industrial, and other research organizations, with the object of encouraging the investigation of natural phenomena. The increased use of scientific research in the development of American industries. The employment of scientific methods in strengthening the national defense. And such other applications of science as will promote the national security and welfare. The National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Engineering, and the Institute of Medicine work. Through the National Research Council of the United States, one of world's most important advisory bodies. More than 6,000 scientists, engineers, industrialists, 
and health and other professionals participating in numerous committees comprise the National Research Council. What are the seven Millennium Prize problems? The seven Millennium Prize problems are, Birch and Swinnert and Dyer Conjecture. Hodge Conjecture Poincaré Conjecture Riemann Hypothesis Solution of the Navier-Stokes Equations Formulation of the Yang-Mills Theory PVSNP Who discovered the formula for the area of a triangle? Heron, or Hero of Alexandria, 1st century B. C. E. is best known in the history of mathematics for the formula that bears his name. This formula calculates the area of a triangle with sides A, B, and C, with S equals half the perimeter. The Arab mathematicians who preserved and transmitted the mathematics of the Greeks reported that this formula was known earlier to Archimedes, c. 287-212 BCE. But the earliest proof now known is that appearing in Heron's Metrica. How many feet are on each side of an acre that is square? An acre that is square in shape has about 208.7 feet, 64 meters, on each side. What is the science of chaos? Chaos or chaotic behavior is the behavior of a system whose final state depends very sensitively on the initial conditions. The behavior is unpredictable and cannot be distinguished from a random process. Even though it is strictly determinate in a mathematical sense. Chaos studies the complex and irregular behavior of many systems in nature. Such as changing weather patterns, flow of turbulent fluids, and swinging pendulums. Scientists Once thought they could make exact predictions about such systems. But found that a tiny difference in starting conditions can lead to greatly different results. Chaotic systems do obey certain rules, which mathematicians have described with equations. But the science of chaos demonstrates the difficulty of predicting the long-range behavior of chaotic systems. What are the common mathematical formulas for area? Area of a rectangle, area equals length times width A equals LW area equals altitude times base A equals of area of a circle. Area equals pi times the radius squared A equals tier 2 or A equals 1 slash 4 TID 2 area of a triangle. Area equals 1 half the altitude times the base A equals 1 slash 2 of area of the surface of a sphere. Area equals 4 times pi times the radius squared A equals 4 tier 2 or A equals TID 2 area of a square, area equals length times width. 
or length of one side squared a equals s23 area of a cube, area equals square of the length of one. Side times 6a equals 6s2 area of an ellipse, area equals long diameter times short diameter times 0 0.7854. Volume of a cylinder, volume equals area of the base times the height V equals BH volume of a circular cylinder. With circular base volume equals pi times the square of the radius of the base times. The height V equals tier 2H volume of a cube, volume equals the length of one side cube V equals S3 volume of a cone. Volume equals one third times pi times the square of the radius of the base times the height v. Equals one third tier two h volume of a rectangular solid. Volume equals length times width times height v equals l w h. What are the platonic solids? The platonic solids are the five regular polyhedra, the four-sided tetrahedron, the six-sided cube or hexahedron. The eight-sided octahedron, the twelve-sided dodecahedron, and the twenty-sided icosahedron. Although they had been studied as long ago as the time of Pythagoras, around 500 BCE, they are called the Platonic solids because they were first described in detail by Plato, 427 to 347 BCE. Around 400 BCE, the ancient Greeks gave mystical significance to the Platonic solids, the tetrahedron represented fire. The icosahedron represented water, the stable cube represented the earth, the octahedron represented the air. The twelve faces of the dodecahedron corresponded to the twelve signs of the zodiac. And this figure represented the entire universe. What is the origin of the expression do not fold, spindle, or mutilate? This is the inscription on an IBM punched card. Frequently. Office workers organize papers and forms by stapling or folding them together, or by impaling them on a spindle. Because Hall Aerith, punched, card readers scan uniform rectangular holes in a precise arrangement. Any damage to the physical card makes it unusable. In the 1950s and 1960s, when punched cards became widespread. Manufacturers printed a warning on each card, IBM's do not fold, spindle, or mutilate was the best known. In 1964, the student revolution at the University of California. Berkeley used the phrase as a symbol of authority and regimentation. What is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of clearly defined rules and instructions for the solution of a problem. It is not necessarily applied only in computers, but can be a step-by-step -step procedure for solving any particular kind of problem. A nearly 4,000-year-old Babylonian banking calculation inscribed on a tablet is an algorithm.
as is a computer program that consists of step-by-step -step procedures for solving a problem. The term is derived from the name of Muhammad ibn Musa al-Kharizmi, C780 C850. A Baghdad mathematician who introduced Hindu numerals, including zero, and decimal calculation to the West. When his treatise was translated into Latin in the 12th century. The art of computation with Arabic, Hindu, numerals became known as algorithm. How large is a nanometer? A nanometer equals one billionth of a meter. A sheet of paper is about 100,000 nanometers thick. As a comparison, a single walled carbon nanotube, measuring one nanometer in diameter, is 100,000 times smaller than a single strand of human hair which measures 100 micrometers in diameter. What is the difference between a median and a mean? If a string of numbers is arranged in numerical order, the median is the middle value of the string. If there is an even number of values in the string, the median is found by adding the two middle values and dividing by two. The arithmetic mean, also known as the simple average, is found by taking the sum of the numbers in the string and dividing by the number of items in the string. While easy to calculate for relatively short strings, the arithmetic mean can be misleading. As very large or very small values in the string can distort it. For example, the mean of the salaries of a professional football team would be skewed if one of the players was a high-earning superstar. It could be well above the salaries of any of the other players thus making the mean higher. The mode is the number in a string that appears most often. For the string 1112222345566767, for example, the median is the middle number of the series. 3. The arithmetic mean is the sum of numbers divided by the number of numbers in the series. 51 slash 15 equals 3.4. The mode is the number that occurs most often, 2. What is an expert system? An expert system is a type of highly specialized software that analyzes complex problems in a particular field and recommends possible solutions based on information previously programmed into it. The person who develops an expert system first analyzes the behavior of a human expert in a given field. Then inputs all the explicit rules resulting from their study into the system. Expert systems are used in equipment repair, insurance planning, training, medical diagnosis, and other areas. What was the first important scientific society in the United States?
The first significant scientific society in the United States was the American Philosophical Society. Organized in 1743 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, by Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790. During colonial times, the quest to understand nature and seek information about the natural world was called natural philosophy. What was the first National Scientific Society organized in the United States? The first National Scientific Society organized in the United States was the American Association for the Advancement of Science, AAAS. It was established on September 20, 1848, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for the purpose of advancing science in every way. The first president of the AAAS was William Charles Redfield, 1789-1857. What was the first successful video arcade game? Pong, a simple electronic version of a tennis game, was the first successful video arcade game. Although it was first marketed in 1972, Pong was actually invented 14 years earlier in 1958 by William Higginbotham. 1910-1994, who, at the time, headed instrumentation design at Brookhaven National Laboratory. Invented to amuse visitors during the laboratory. The game was so popular that visitors would stand in line for hours to play it. Higginbotham dismantled the system two years later, and, considering it a trifle, did not patent it. In 1972, Atari released Pong, an arcade version of Higginbotham's game. And Magnavox released Odyssey, a version that could be played on home televisions. What was the first successful video arcade game? Pong, a simple electronic version of a tennis game, was the first successful video arcade game. Although it was first marketed in 1972, Pong was actually invented 14 years earlier in 1958 by William Higginbotham. 1910-1994, who, at the time, headed instrumentation design at Brookhaven National Laboratory. Invented to amuse visitors touring the laboratory. The game was so popular that visitors would stand in line for hours to play it. Higginbotham dismantled the system two years later, and, considering it a trifle, did not patent it. In 1972, Atari released Pong, an arcade version of Higginbotham's game. And Magnavox released Odyssey, a version that could be played on home televisions. What was the Turk? The Turk was the name for a famous chess playing automaton. An automaton, such as a robot, 
is a mechanical figure constructed to act as if it moves by its own power. On a dare in 1770, a civil servant in the Vienna Imperial Court named Wolfgang von Kempelen. 1734-1804, created a chess-playing machine. This mustached, man-sized figure carved from wood wore a turban, trousers, and robe, and sat behind a desk. In one hand it held a long Turkish pipe, implying that it had just finished a pre-game smoke. And its innards were filled with gears, pulleys, and cams. The machine seemed a keen chess player and dumbfounded onlookers by defeating all the best human chess players. It was a farce, however, its moves were surreptitiously made by a man hiding inside. The Turk, so dubbed because of the outfit similar to traditional Turkish garb, is regarded as a forerunner to the Industrial Revolution because it created a commotion over devices that could complete complex tasks. Historians argue that it inspired people to invent other early devices such as the power loom and the telephone. And it even was a precursor to concepts such as artificial intelligence and computerization. Today, however, Computer chess games are so sophisticated that they can defeat even the world's best chess masters. In May 1997, the Deep Blue Chess Computer defeated world champion Garry Kasparov, 1963. Deep Blue was a 32 note IBM R6000 SP high performance. Computer that used Power 2 Superchip Processors, P2SC. Each node had a single microchannel card containing a dedicated VLSI. Chess processors for a total of 256 processors working in tandem. Allowing Deep Blue to calculate 100 to 200 billion chess moves within 3 minutes. What was the Turk? The Turk was the name for a famous chess playing automaton. An automaton, such as a robot, is a mechanical figure constructed to act as if it moves by its own power. On a dare in 1770, a civil servant in the Vienna Imperial Court named Wolfgang von Kempelen. 1734-1804, created a chess-playing machine. This mustached, man-sized figure carved from wood wore a turban, trousers, and robe, and sat behind a desk. In one hand it held a long Turkish pipe, implying that it had just finished a pre-game smoke and its innards were filled with gears, pulleys, and cams. The machine seemed a keen chess player and dumbfounded onlookers by defeating all the best human chess players. It was a farce, however, its moves were surreptitiously made by a man hiding inside. The Turk, so dubbed because of the outfit similar to traditional Turkish garb, is regarded as a forerunner to the Industrial Revolution because it created a commotion over devices that could complete complex tasks. Historians argue that it inspired people to invent other early devices such as the power loom and the telephone. And it even was a precursor to concepts such as artificial intelligence and computerization. Today, however, Computer chess games are so sophisticated 
that they can defeat even the world's best chess masters. In May 1997, the Deep Blue Chess Computer defeated world champion Garry Kasparov, 1963. Deep Blue was a 32-note IBM R-6000 SP high performance. Computer that used Power 2 Super Chip Processors, P2SC. Each node had a single microchannel card containing 8 dedicated VLSI. Chess processors for a total of 256 processors working in tandem. Allowing Deep Blue to calculate 100 to 200 billion chess moves within 3 minutes. What's the difference between a bit and a byte? Byte, a common unit of computer storage, holds the equivalent of a single character. Such as a letter, a, a number, two, a symbol, dollar, a decimal point, or a space. It is usually equivalent to 8 data bits and 1 parity bit. A bit, a binary digit, the smallest unit of information in a digital computer, is equivalent to a single zero or one. The parity bit is used to check for errors in the bits making up the byte. 8 data bits per byte is the most common size used by computer manufacturers. What's the difference between a bit and a byte? Byte, a common unit of computer storage, holds the equivalent of a single character. Such as a letter, a, a number, two, a symbol, dollar, a decimal point, or a space. It is usually equivalent to 8 data bits and 1 parity bit. A bit, a binary digit, the smallest unit of information in a digital computer, is equivalent to a single zero or one. The parity bit is used to check for errors in the bits making up the byte. 8 data bits per byte is the most common size used by computer manufacturers. What are the components of a computer? Computers have two major components, the hardware and the software. Hardware consists of all the physical devices needed to actually build and operate a computer. Examples of computer hardware are the central processing unit, CPU. Hard drive, memory, modems, and external devices such as the keyboard, monitor. Printers, scanners, and other devices that can be physically touched. Software is an integral part of a computer and consists of the various computer programs that allow the user to interact with it and specify the tasks the computer performs. Without software, a computer is merely a collection of circuits and metal in a box unable to perform even the most basic functions. What are the components of a computer?
computers have two major components, the hardware and the software. Hardware consists of all the physical devices needed to actually build and operate a computer. Examples of computer hardware are the central processing unit, CPU. Hard drive, memory, modems, and external devices such as the keyboard, monitor. Printers, scanners, and other devices that can be physically touched. Software is an integral part of a computer and consists of the various computer programs that allow the user to interact with it and specify the tasks the computer performs. Without software, a computer is merely a collection of circuits and metal in a box unable to perform even the most basic functions. Why does the actual amount of computer storage space differ from the advertised amount of storage? Computer storage space for hard drives and other storage media is calculated in base 2 using binary format with a byte as the basic unit. The common units of computer storage are, kilobyte, KB, 024 bytes megabyte, MB, 1024 kilobytes or 1,048,576 bytes gigabyte, GB, 024 megabytes or 1,073,741,824 bytes tier byte. TB, 024 gigabytes, or 1 trillion 99 billion 511 million 627,776 bytes however, since consumers are more familiar with the decimal. Base 10, system of numbers, computer manufacturers describe storage sizes in. Base 10 where 1 megabyte is 1 million bytes and 1 gigabyte is 1 billion bytes. Therefore, for each gigabyte they are over-reporting storage space by 73,741,824 bytes. The concept is further complicated because some storage media may have the actual amount of advertised storage but some of the available storage is lost due to formatting. Why does the actual amount of computer storage space differ from the advertised amount of storage? Computer storage space for hard drives and other storage media is calculated in base 2 using binary format with a byte as the basic unit. The common units of computer storage are kilobyte, KB, 024 bytes, megabyte, MB, 1024 kilobytes or 1,048,576 bytes gigabyte, GB, 024 megabytes or 1,073,741,824 bytes tier byte. TB, 024 gigabytes or 1 trillion 99 billion 511 million 627,776 bytes however, since consumers are more familiar with the decimal. Base 10, system of numbers, computer manufacturers describe storage sizes in. Base 10 where 1 megabyte is 1 million bytes and 1 gigabyte is 1 billion bytes. Therefore, for each gigabyte they are over-reporting storage space by 73,741,824 bytes. 
The concept is further complicated because some storage media may have the actual amount of advertised storage. But some of the available storage is lost due to formatting. What is a silicon chip? A silicon chip is an almost pure piece of silicon. Usually less than 1 cm square and about half a millimeter thick. It contains hundreds of thousands of miniaturized electronic circuit components. Mainly transistors, packed and interconnected in layers beneath the surface. These components can perform control, logic, and memory functions. There is a grid of thin metallic strips on the surface of the chip. These wires are used for electrical connections to other devices. The silicon chip was developed independently by two researchers, Jack Kilby. 1923 to 2005 of Texas Instruments in 1958 and Robert Noyce 1927 to 1990 of Fairchild Semiconductor in 1959 Jack Kilby was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2000 for his discovery of the silicon chip while silicon chips are essential to almost all computer operations today. A myriad of other devices depend on them as well, including calculators, microwave ovens, automobiles, and VCRs. What is a silicon chip? A silicon chip is an almost pure piece of silicon. Usually less than 1 cm square and about half a millimeter thick. It contains hundreds of thousands of miniaturized electronic circuit components. Mainly transistors, packed and interconnected in layers beneath the surface. These components can perform control, logic, and memory functions. There is a grid of thin metallic strips on the surface of the chip. These wires are used for electrical connections to other devices. The silicon chip was developed independently by two researchers, Jack Kilby. 1923 to 2005 of Texas Instruments in 1958 and Robert Noyce 1927 to 1990 of Fairchild Semiconductor in 1959 Jack Kilby was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2000 for his discovery of the silicon chip while silicon chips are essential to almost all computer operations today. A myriad of other devices depend on them as well, including calculators, microwave ovens, automobiles, and VCRs. What are the sizes of silicon chips? Small silicon chips may be no more than 1 16th square by 1 30th thick and hold up to tens of thousands of transistors. Large chips, the size of a postage stamp, can contain hundreds of millions of transistors. What are the sizes of silicon chips?
small silicon chips may be no more than 1 16th square by 1 30th thick and hold up to tens of thousands of transistors. Large chips, the size of a postage stamp, can contain hundreds of millions of transistors. What is the central processing unit of a computer? The central processing unit, CPU, of a computer is where almost all computing takes place in all computers including mainframes, desktops, laptops, and servers. The CPU of almost every computer is contained on a single chip. What is the central processing unit of a computer? The central processing unit, CPU, of a computer is where almost all computing takes place in all computers including mainframes, desktops, laptops, and servers. The CPU of almost every computer is contained on a single chip. How is the speed of a CPU measured? Separate from the real-time clock which keeps track of the time of day. The CPU clock sets the tempo for the processor and measures the transmission speed of electronic devices. The clock is used to synchronize data pulses between sender and receiver. A 1 MHz clock manipulates a set number of bits 1 million times per second. In general, the higher the clock speed, the quicker data is processed. However, newer versions of software often require quicker computers just to maintain their overall processing speed. The Hertz is named in honor of Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, who detected electromagnetic waves in 1883. 1. Hertz is equal to the number of electromagnetic waves or cycles in a signal that is one cycle per second. How is the speed of a CPU measured? Separate from the real-time clock which keeps track of the time of day. The CPU clock sets the tempo for the processor and measures the transmission speed of electronic devices. The clock is used to synchronize data pulses between sender and receiver. A 1 MHz clock manipulates a set number of bits 1 million times per second. In general, the higher the clock speed, the quicker data is processed. However, newer versions of software often require quicker computers just to maintain their overall processing speed. The Hertz is named in honor of Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, who detected electromagnetic waves in 1883. 1. Hertz is equal to the number of electromagnetic waves or cycles in a signal that is one cycle per second. What is the difference between RAM and ROM?
Random Access Memory RAM, is where programs and the systems that run the computer are stored until the CPU can access them. RAM may be read and altered by the user. In general, the more RAM, the faster the computer. RAM holds data only when the current is onto the computer. Newer computers have DDR, double data rate, memory chips. Read only memory, ROM, is memory that can be read, but not altered by the user. ROM stores information, such as operating programs, even when the computer is switched off. What is the difference between RAM and ROM? Random Access Memory RAM, is where programs and the systems that run the computer are stored until the CPU can access them. RAM may be read and altered by the user. In general, the more RAM, the faster the computer. RAM holds data only when the current is onto the computer. Newer computers have DDR, double data rate, memory chips. Read only memory, ROM, is memory that can be read, but not altered by the user. ROM stores information, such as operating programs, even when the computer is switched off. Are any devices being developed to replace silicon chips? When transistors were introduced in 1948, they demanded less power than fragile. High temperature vacuum tubes, they allowed electronic equipment to become smaller, faster, and more dependable, and they generated less heat. These developments three made computers much more economical and accessible. They also made portable radios practical. However, the smaller components were harder to wire together. And hand wiring was both expensive and error prone. In the early 1960s, circuits on silicon chips allowed manufacturers to build increased power, speed, and memory storage into smaller packages, which required less electricity to operate and generated even less heat. While through most of the 1970s manufacturers could count on doubling the components on a chip every year. Without increasing the size of the chip, the size limitations of silicon chips are becoming more restrictive. Though components continue to grow smaller, the same rate of shrinking cannot be maintained. Researchers are investigating different materials to use in making circuit chips. Gallium arsenide is harder to handle in manufacturing. But it has the potential for greatly increased switching speed. Organic polymers are potentially cheaper to manufacture and could be used for liquid crystal and other flat screen displays. Which need to have their electronic circuits spread over a wide area. Unfortunately, organic polymers do not allow electricity to pass through as well as the silicons do. Several researchers are working on hybrid chips, which could combine the benefits of organic polymers with those of silicon. 
Researchers are also in the initial stages of developing integrated optical chips, which would use light rather than electric current. Optical chips would generate little or no heat, would allow faster switching, and would be immune to electrical noise. Are any devices being developed to replace silicon chips? When transistors were introduced in 1948, they demanded less power than fragile. High temperature vacuum tubes, they allowed electronic equipment to become smaller. Faster and more dependable, and they generated less heat. These developments three made computers much more economical and accessible. They also made portable radios practical. However, the smaller components were harder to wire together. And hand wiring was both expensive and error prone. In the early 1960s, circuits on silicon chips allowed manufacturers to build increased power, speed, and memory storage into smaller packages, which required less electricity to operate and generated even less heat. While through most of the 1970s manufacturers could count on doubling the components on a chip every year. Without increasing the size of the chip, the size limitations of silicon chips are becoming more restrictive. Though components continue to grow smaller, the same rate of shrinking cannot be maintained. Researchers are investigating different materials to use in making circuit chips. Gallium arsenide is harder to handle in manufacturing but it has the potential for greatly increased switching speed. Organic polymers are potentially cheaper to manufacture and could be used for liquid crystal and other flat screen displays, which need to have their electronic circuits spread over a wide area. Unfortunately, organic polymers do not allow electricity to pass through as well as the silicons do. Several researchers are working on hybrid chips, which could combine the benefits of organic polymers with those of silicon. Researchers are also in the initial stages of developing integrated optical chips, which would use light rather than electric current. Optical chips would generate little or no heat would allow faster switching, and would be immune to electrical noise. What is Moore's Law? Gordon Moore, 1929, co-founder of Intel, R a top microchip manufacturer. Observed in 1965 that the number of transistors per microchip and hence a chip's processing power would double about every year and a half. The press dubbed this Moore's Law. Despite claims that this ever-increasing trend cannot perpetuate, history has shown that microchip advances are, indeed, keeping pace with Moore's prediction. What is Moore's Law? Gordon Moore, 1929, co-founder of Intel, R, a top microchip manufacturer. 
observed in 1965 that the number of transistors per microchip and hence a chip's processing power would double about every year and a half. The press dubbed this Moore's Law, despite claims that this ever-increasing trend cannot perpetuate. History has shown that microchip advances are, indeed, keeping pace with Moore's prediction. What is the central processing unit of a computer? The central processing unit, CPU, of a computer is where almost all computing takes place in all computers including mainframes, desktops, laptops, and servers. The CPU of almost every computer is contained on a single chip. What is the law of very large numbers? Formulated by Percy Diaconis, 1945, and Frederick Mosteller, 1916-2006, of Harvard University. This long understood law of statistics states that with a large enough sample, any outrageous thing is apt to happen. Therefore, seemingly amazing coincidences can actually be expected. If given sufficient time or a large enough pool of subjects. For example, when a New Jersey woman won the lottery twice in four months. The media publicized it as an incredible long shot of 1 in 17 trillion. However, when statisticians looked beyond this individual's chances and asked what were the odds of the same happening to any person buying a lottery ticket in the United States over a six-month period, the number dropped dramatically to 1 in 30, according to researchers. Coincidences arise often in statistical work, but some have hidden causes and therefore are not coincidences at all. Many are simply chance events reflecting the luck of the draw.